So now that we have a solid understanding of the different ways we can use motion, we're ready to dive into Studio to start some animating of our own. For this video, we'll be covering the basics of prototyping and sharing. These are some of the fundamentals that allow us to start using conversational motion in our designs. We won't create fully custom animations until later in the course, but we'll see how even the default animations can allow us to quickly iterate through concepts without getting bogged down in the specifics. These lower fidelity prototypes can then be shared across an organization to keep everyone informed and involved. The main studio features we'll be covering are adding default interactions, as well as selecting what type they are and how they're triggered. We'll also go over previewing our designs, mirroring them to our mobile devices, and uploading them to the Envision web platform to share, comment, and collaborate. There's a link below to the full studio file I'll be using. To get the most out of this video and the course as a whole, I recommend going through all the videos twice. The first time you can follow along with the file I've provided. This will give you a good overview of the basics of motion design and how to use Studio's animation features. Then, when you go back through it a second time, you can apply all the concepts to your own designs. This will help you not only learn the software and the concepts, but start thinking about your own designs in a more dynamic way. Here's an overview of the app we're creating. It's a fictional desktop app called Substrate. Basically, it's a way for someone to manage their subscriptions, see how much they're paying each month, and make sure that they don't miss a payment. Here we've got the landing page. It just explains what the service does and has a few example screens of the app. Once someone hits get started, they'll jump over to the main page where they have to add a subscription before they can see any of the information. Here we've got a subscription flow for them to add those subscriptions. And then finally, once they do that, they'll go to the detail page. For this page in particular, I picked a service that everyone probably knows of, but this is a great spot for you to customize it and pick your favorite service and then kind of figure out what is the data that's most relevant to that and how can you display that and how can you animate that. Here we've got the overview page. This just gives someone a sense of all their subscriptions and how much they're spending each month. And then finally we have that same page but with the sidebar expanded because that's something we're going to be animating later as well. For now though, let's move back over to the landing page and start creating our prototype. Later in the course, we'll be adding some parallax animations to this page. Right now though, we just need a way for someone to click get started and then move into the app. So I'll select the first button by holding control to select an element inside of a group, and then I'll select interactions in the right hand inspector panel. You can see this gives us a couple more options. Trigger is the action that someone needs to take to start an interaction and navigate to screen is the page that they'll end up on at the end of an interaction. And then transition is basically how do they move between the two. Preset gives us all of the default interactions while motion lets you customize it a bit further. For this particular interaction, we're gonna leave it on click and then we're gonna navigate to the welcome screen. We'll leave our transition on preset, but change our type to fade in. And then we want the same interaction on the second button. And there are a couple ways we can do this. You can select interaction on the sidebar again, or you can select the lightning bolt in the header bar. A third option is to press the hotkey C. When we press that, we get this pick whip where we just have to click on the page rather than select it in the dropdown. So I'll select our welcome page, and you can see it carries over all of the options we defined before. So I just need to hit save. Another way you can do that is by selecting the first one, right clicking to copy, and then right clicking on the new element and pasting that interaction. Let's preview our landing page transition and then we'll move into the rest of the app. You can select the preview button in the header bar or you can use the hotkey command P. So here's our prototype. I'll select get started and you can see it moves us over to the app. One final thing we need to do on this page is we'll select scrolling and select vertical. Since this page is taller than our preview, that'll let us scroll. So to continue creating our prototype, we'll select the button in the welcome page press C to create our interaction, and then select the first page of the onboarding sequence. For this one, we'll select slide up because we want this modal to come in from the bottom. For this one, we'll select our sample service, which is Netflix, and then we'll select instant since it's a transition state and not a new modal. And then for this one, we want the new modal to come in from the right, so we'll select slide left. And then we'll do the same thing for the final page of the onboarding flow. Once they've input all their data, we'll select the finish button and then move over to the overview page. Since the modal slid in from the bottom, we'll select slide down so it can go back to the same location that it started from. When we're on this page, we want a way for someone to collapse and expand the sidebar navigation. So we'll select the entertainment dropdown, press C, 
And then since we're not doing a full dropdown animation, we'll just select instant to at least give someone an idea of what will happen. Similarly on the expanded page, if we want to collapse it, we'll leave it on instant. The last step is making sure we have a way for someone to view the detail page. I'll select the Netflix sidebar item, hit C, and then select the detail page. And then on this one, we want it to fade. Now that we have everything set up, let's preview it. So we can scroll through the landing page, we'll press get started, and then we'll add a subscription. Even though this transition doesn't totally make sense, you can see that it's demonstrating that the modal comes in from the bottom. We'll select Netflix, and then we'll select next. And then similarly here, even though we don't want the background to move, this gives you a sense that the modal will come in from the right hand side. And then as it finishes, it drops down to the bottom. So now let's test out our sidebar. All right, and then with it expanded, we'll click Netflix. And there we go. Now that we have our complete prototype, we're ready to test it and to get some feedback. So to do that, we're gonna press share in the header. First we'll test it and then we'll upload it and start getting some feedback. So to test it, we're gonna select mirror and it gives us a QR code. Then here in the Envision mobile app, we'll select the mirror option and then we'll scan the QR code. Now you can see for this example, since it's a desktop app, it doesn't really make sense to preview this, but this should at least give you an idea of when you are designing mobile apps, how you can do that. So everything looks good, let's upload it. We'll go back to the share icon, and then we'll type in a name. Once we've done that, we hit publish. Now that it's uploaded, we just have to click this link to view our prototype. We can scroll and click through it in the same way that we did in the preview, but the advantage here is that we can leave comments and share it. Since we know some of our animations are pretty rough, we can just leave a comment explaining exactly how they would happen. Even though the motion in this prototype isn't 100% complete, we can see if the flows make sense and if the animation makes sense as well. If you'd like to explore more about using motion to collaborate and communicate, the full course has articles about how existing design systems use motion and strategies for integrating it into your own. Otherwise, the next video starts going into motion transitions and the timeline editor.